Welcome to Sidious Mag's post-race show. Tonight, we're talking Femke Bull, Miltildis Tentoglu, uh, Antonio Watson, Quincy Hall, Danielle Williams, Jasmine Camacho Quinn, Kendra Harrison, and more. Here are your hosts, Chris Chavez, Kyle Merber, Mitch Dyer, and Jasmine Todd. E6, sound mind, sound body. 365 days. One year until history is made. A lifetime of preparation that will lead us to the ultimate test. 365 days until we show the world what a sound mind and a sound body can do. See you in Paris. Stability never felt better. The first five miles, you're just getting warmed up. From downtown to uptown, you'll take the scenic route. Tired legs? You'll feel fresh. From first steps to final strides. Steep hills, super steep hills, long runs, even longer runs. Whatever comes, you can run through it. With stability, cushioning, and more comfort than ever in every step. Because nothing feels better than the adaptive stability and premium comfort of the Gel Keanu 30 shoe. It is day six, Thursday, August 24th. You knew the date. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's right in front of me. <laughs> and this is the Sidious Mag post-race show. Uh, Chris Shav is here with Kyle Merber, Mitch Dyer, and Jasmine Todd. Uh, and we are so pumped. We're over halfway through the World Championships. And... Our coverage is presented by ASICS. I didn't forget the ad read this time. You Kyle. did it. <laughs> good job. Tell them, tell them about ASICS and, and all the good work that we've been putting in with them. This yeah, week. ASICS makes shoes. <laughs> <laughs> they make clothes. <laughs> they sponsor group runs, which we had this morning. But most importantly, they support the athletes. They support their athletes and us supporting the athletes. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, you know, we had a group run this morning. hundred or so people came out. From all over the world, good turnout, didn't lose anyone for the most part, and some people, <clears throat> Mac Fleet, <clears throat> Dave McCarthy pushing the pace up front, <laughs> got, got, got things spread out a little bit, but uh, you know what? That's Sidious Mag. We say all pace is welcome, and I guess we mean fast pace Even fast, too. too. <laughs> yeah. They're probably... Up in the front, just cruising in their MetaSpeed Sky Plus. Oh, they uh, were. And that's what did it. Uh, go get yourself a pair of the Metaspe MetaSpeed Sky Plus at ASICS.com. They've got, actually, you know what? I went on their website the other day, and I was looking at, um, they've got special colorways for things for the World Athletics Championships. We're actually, oh. for the, those of us who are running the 10K, uh, we've got a whole box of shoes over there. Uh, oh, got it on. Oh, Jasmine's got them on right now. So oh. There they are on the camera. That is a special colorway that's out right now. Do super shoes have any place in what you do? You know, honestly, <laughs> I feel like at this point, these could be used for the race walk because I've been speedy walking in these. This is the fastest <laughs> I've walked, man. That's a perfect <laughs> transition to what we're going to talk about. Let's talk about the action that took place today because I turned over to you. I said, oh, thank goodness we only had an evening session tonight so we can catch up on uh, some sleep <laughs> in between the morning. And then we heard it from Mitch that there we were mistaken. There was some action in the morning. 30 seconds. Yeah, pretty... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you always limit how much I can get in there. No, it was hot. It was so hot out there. I mean, I think a Tell lot of... Tell what you're a talking lot, about. A lot of bodies dropped in the walk. Like, and there's, there's some tough competitors. 35K, 
I know that's you guys have. What do you guys don't use the metric system? What do you call your? That's system? just under a marathon to me. Yeah, just head. under a marathon. But yeah, I mean, obviously the winners of the twenty k, which was earlier in the program, came back and doubled and both won the men's and women's thirty five as well. So it's party time in Spain. That They've begs won the question. Both of them, and there was a proposal. Did you guys see that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, did. I saw yeah. a picture. That's why I, I haven't looked at the comment section on it, but I'm sure there's mixed feelings about like a proposal at a finish line. Of a no race. one's commenting anything negative on a happy proposal, Chris. You psychopath. No, <laughs> I'm not too sure. <laughs> someone, someone, someone yeah. did it at the New York City Marathon one year, and it was like, oh, because like the woman was running the race, and the guy proposed, you know, just after the Queensboro Bridge, and it was like, now you're making it about yourself, and this is her day, and she's racing, so I don't know if there's those feelings. Uh, My thing here. has always been, this is in, first off, like, you know your partner and how they want to be proposed to, and... I would hope so. Yeah, you know. I hope there was a conversation you know, at right. some point. Some people like it private, some people like a more public display, but I, my stance on everything proposal related is generally like you have a finite number of extremely special happy days in your life and the proposals one and presumably competing at the world championships is another why double it up like let's split divide and conquer also it was brutal conditions out there did he have a backup, <laughs> was was did he have a backup plan for like had she dropped out of the race like yeah, I have lots. How'd of they questions. do? Did they were they? High I couldn't finishers? tell you where they finished. I got no idea. I only saw. I didn't even see the proposal itself. I just saw it on socials, and I was like, okay, that's interesting. So I mean, I guess no matter what happened or how she did, at least she got a proposal out yeah, of it, right? Yeah, like, like, she's got something positive. Whether she's got some hardware on her hand. Yeah, she's got yeah, something. Some people <laughs> leave here with, with medals. Blink. Some yeah. others leave with engagement rings. Yeah, diamonds are harder than gold. Is that true? My dad's a jeweler. I should ask him. That. Pretty sure diamonds are the hardest. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> all right. Do you want to okay. No, you, that, you got another fifteen more seconds. No, on. we can just leave it at that. It was brutal conditions, <laughs> and uh, you know, unfortunately, Spain. a lot of people didn't finish. Spain, Spain go gold, 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 gold. Same athletes repeat. They're catching up to the U.S. in terms of they're moving. So I was medals. pulling up the medal table um, just because you know I think like the big thing is that. Jamaica had a great day at the track tonight, but I do want to take a second to brag about the Americans. And uh, we are... Uh, For once, we are going to brag Jamaicans about... The Jamaicans are about wow, to attack you. We're still, we're still at the top of the medal table. <laughs> We've got seven gold, six silver, six bronze, nine, 19 total medals. And right behind us, as a result of the gold, 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 gold by Spain, they're, no, the one. they're second yep. on the medal table. Jamaica, third after a big night, two golds, three silver, three bronze, and you can go on and on. Great Britain, Canada, Ethiopia, Italy, Kenya. I'm going to list off all 200 yeah, countries. Yeah. Please, um, no. <laughs> but, all right, so let's start with the fact that tonight was Jamaica's night. So we'll start with the women's 100-meter hurdles, which coming into this race, we were all just like, if you ran this race 10 different times, you'd have 10 different outcomes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I mean, if you ran this race on the same day as the semifinal, you might. I have couldn't help. Yeah, that was mm. my thought process. I can't help but wonder what results would have been had they just did the final yesterday instead of today. So I the, can think of someone who probably wished that they had done it yesterday. Probably quite a few. Mm. So Danielle Williams uh, comes out on top with a twelve forty three seasons best, timed it perfectly, two thousand fifteen. Uh, world champion finally gets the medal back and then Jasmine Camacho Quinn your Olympic champion takes silver Kendra Harrison who was just on fire through the rounds ends up with a bronze in 1246 and then from there you know I it, mean that was a it's tight all close race. yeah Toby that Amazon was, was sixth a very tight race and uh, Jamaica like please don't come for me on Twitter because I know that I did not have Danielle on my predictions when I posted my video. So apologies, but yeah. I don't think many people did. <laughs> like in fairness, it was a huge deal. And obviously a previous world champion, how big of an upset can it really be? But think about the, the meat between the Danielle Williams sandwich of 2015 to 2023 and how much the event has changed in that period of time. Like truly completely revolutionized times that were good then are totally different than what we consider fast yes competitive today and so just to bookend that is amazing i mean some people the when an event shifts how do you respond 
and she has fully responded to take down the world record holder previous world record holder previous gold medalists like really taking down big big names and it just feels like uh jamaica had a clutch day i can't believe how many jamaicans are here goodness Dude. goodness me i mean like i just like looked at uh danielle williams is like results for the season and like she's raced so much wow. since april that's and all from this year that's all from just this year and uh only won one of those races and that was at in atlanta which i'm pretty sure that was at the no it wasn't even like the atlanta city games it was like the atlanta open so yeah it, it, she was coming around season's best in the first round season's best in the second round season's best in the third round so peaked at the right time uh to come away with the gold medal can i say i'm a little sad at the time you can be sad okay can, i'm yeah. a little sad at the time because i was hoping for a faster time um, I think that these ladies are very capable of getting closer to the world record, which is why I'm a little upset about this possible, the possible reasoning of it being that they didn't have the final the same day as the semi. I think just having that rest and it was probably just a little too much instead of going back to back, firing it up. It is Explain it for the people, because this is in the same case sometimes as 100, which you've had plenty of experience in your career. Um, but why do you think some athletes prefer sort of that same day semifinal final is it just that my legs are already activated and like you know all you need is just a little bit of care in between because like you know to if you told a distance runner that your 1500 semi and final was going to be two three hours apart like they'd no be bueno. like no way so why is it in the in, very different yeah. you guys got the slow twitch muscles yeah <laughs> Um, with those fast twitch muscles, it's kind of like being at practice. Literally, it's basically you're going to go do an all out rep. You're going to have 30 minutes, maybe an hour for full recovery that allows for full recovery for your body to keep going. And then you're active all over again, ready to go. It's literally like being at a practice day where you're going all out and having that day of recovery in my eyes allows for all all of the lactic to build up in your body eventually i mean obviously you guys are probably looking at me like lactic you guys do sprints but <laughs> just doing all that work and especially because these ladies have been running so fast for the past two days before coming into today that's a lot of days of putting your body out there to run to the fullest capability that it can yeah, you do think about it in terms of it's you go through the full warm-up again so now at this point, it's like three days of full warm up, racing, cool down. It's just and it out of rhythm. Hot, hot having to stay oh, hydrated. It's it's a lot on your body. And I think that three days is pushing it a little bit too much. So Jasmine Camacho Quinn, second. Kenny Harrison, third. It's, I mean, it's a race that, again, you run it a bunch of different times. You're going to get a bunch of different outcomes. That's just the depth in this field. Um at the end of the world championships, this is maybe a potential thing you could write about in the lap count that I think like the beauty of the sport is that in two weeks is the diamond league final after the conclusion is it two or three weeks after worlds is the diamond league final that if we lined up the world champions list and like the diamond league champions, I feel like for uh, quite a number of events, it's going to be very different names. Yeah. And you know, there's, multiple potential it's something that we haven't even talked about is the 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 world championship 2025 yeah invite that was just secured for jamaica so they'll have four in 2025 Ooh. and the u.s now has to win that diamond league final if we're gonna get four normally we would just rely on winning you know the worlds and <laughs> that's how we always end up getting four in multiple events but now that diamond league final when you consider how competitive the u.s mm -hmm. is suddenly carries a whole new weight to it and so if i am an american 100 meter hurdler which i'm not i am even if you're in college right now like even if you're one of the young athletes in two years so much can change you're like come on kenny like go you're get rooting. redemption like, we go need this get that redemption please come out with that win for diamond league so we could get a buy and it's kind of like it's adding a little extra pressure going into prefontaine but also at the same time like whoo i'm kind of excited to watch it to be Doesn't honest it, it adds like a whole new element when you think about that yeah whereas if we if you already have the buy and I'm anti-buy in general. That's a whole different conversation. But if you already have the buy, then the Diamond League final only means so much. It's just like, oh, I, I personally care that this one individual gets a big payday. 
I mean, I would just say that this is the meat that matters. So, yeah. I, I mean, you just have to think of it completely separately. Today mattered. Oh, and and that's as far as I'm concerned, that's it. But now, what I'm saying is, for U.S. fans, the Diamond League final matters mm-hmm. more. Come the time that we're there, adds a little bit more spice to that Diamond League final to try to in hopes, come out with somebody to win so that we can have that buy. So ladies, go do your job. But Jamaica just set it <laughs> on fire, set, set the tone tonight. Mm-hmm. Transitioning over now to the men's 400 where Jamaica also had another great showing. Antonio Watson wins in 44-22. Matthew Hudson-Smith of Great Britain takes silver in 44-31. Quincy Hall, the American Sets a personal best at 44.37 to take the bronze. And uh, our boy oh, Vernon. Vernon. Vernon, 0.02 seconds away from a medal. But, hey. I what mean, a hard fight, though. Uh, yeah. He was he was giving it his all in the in those final 100 meters. Um, a bit surprising, Wade Van Eekirk finishes dead last in 45.11. Um, what did you make of this one? I, you know, it was exciting because it was totally different than what we thought this championship 400 would be. I yeah. think coming in, the narrative, which we help set, at least to American fans, is it's it's Steven Gardner versus yeah. Wade Van Niekerk, right? And then through the rounds, obviously without Gardner, that is no longer the, the set narrative. But then also the way Wade looked, it became wide open. And I think that's... The consistent thing through every event is, I have no it's idea just who's going to win. Like, it that's what makes this a little bit more fun, right? Like, who? I, I, this, we've said this now for six days straight. I generally root against favorites. It's boring <laughs> to see people repeat. It's it's boring to see people dominate. I want new stars. I want upsets, and that's what we got. I mean, Antonio he set a big personal best in the semifinals and immediately established himself as a contender in doing so. I know that to American fans, we were so hype on how Vernon was looking and how Quincy was looking that we weren't necessarily looking at what was happening on Jamaican Twitter, <laughs> but they saw the potential. <laughs> they called the shot. Yeah. What was uh, intern Owen's uh, tweet? Oh, afterwards? Yeah. For Quincy uh, Hall? Our intern had a picture of Quincy Hall and said, was this the American 400 meter hurdler that everyone was so excited to try the flat four? I was just about to say like the fact that I'm kind of loving this going from four hurdles over to the 400 flat because they're actually able to show their just dominance and their capability of what they can do. And I kind of want to see him go back to the four hurdles just one good time. Cause I'm wondering what he could do over some hurdles. Well, I said this yesterday, and now I'm even more curious what Rye can do in the flat four. Oh, my gosh. Like, Rye, if you want to come run an open four next year, I don't think we'd be mad. Rye is tentatively scheduled to appear on the show tomorrow, so we can ask him, you know, him uh, ourselves. But, uh, you know, this is the kind of thing where it's sort of like, Rye, does Rye commit to the 400 hurdles? For one more year and then turn his attention to be like, I'm going to be America's top 400 meter runner in the lead up to the 2028 Olympics. I mean, that's good for the script writers. Vince McMahon would. Yeah. Also, um, like, but with Matthew too, Matthew Hudson Smith, um, the fact that he's just had such a phenomenal year and to end his year with a silver medal, I'm, I'm proud of him for that. Because sometimes it's hard because you'll have a great year and you'll come into a championship and you might not leave with hardware. But the fact that he was able to do it is absolutely amazing. And I know that Great Britain is super excited about that medal coming home. I said this to Adele Tracy in the mix zone yesterday who ran for GB and then switched allegiance to Jamaica. I was like, you got the two <laughs> wildest fan bases <laughs> behind you. Like, <laughs> if you can just find a little bit of a connection somewhere in your family history to Hungary, you might like burn <laughs> this place to the ground. <laughs> That's good. Um, the other final on the track tonight was the women's 400 meter hurdles, and in this one, kind of went as expected in the, at the very front of the race. Femke Bull finally gets her gold medal, wins in 51:70. Uh, was aggressive right from from the get go, and relatively we, aggressive. Relatively aggressive. Yeah, it wasn't crazy for I think as dominant as she theoretically could be. could be yeah she was 
I don't know. It wasn't. It seemed a little more relaxed. And then I felt like once she was coming off the curb going into the last stretch is when she kind of kicked it in. Like, all right, let me stop playing with you guys. Let me just go run now. Let me go enter a league of my own. And I can't help but wonder if maybe she's trying to save some energy for the four by four. So maybe she was just like, I know I can meddle. Let me save some energy. Good call, Jasmine. I didn't even think about that. We kind of talked about this the other day where... I, I was coaching her on this because obviously she's listening to <laughs> my coach. advice. Yeah, this podcast. But the idea being just make sure you can get over hurdle nine and ten smooth and yeah. don't try to risk it going for sub 51 or something. Make sure you get that gold. Like this is that first opportunity in future years. You have that opportunity, future races in the season. You have that opportunity to go for it. But like get your bag. Yeah. And this one, I guess like you really get to experience like what makes the 400 hurdles like such a great event. It's just one, the speed at which they're going Two, it's like your eyes are kind of trying to decipher the race as they approach, um, you know, the final turn. And then after that, it's just sort of like, you do get nervous for athletes as they're approaching hurdles eight, nine and 10. It's like, this is where a disaster can strike for somebody. And I did start to feel that for Shamir little, you know, towards Dude, the end, like, that, there's, you know, obviously a little shell. bit of history, but Shamir got it done 5280 for a season's best. Um, Gets a silver medal. Rochelle Clayton from Jamaica adds another medal for Jamaica's collection tonight with a personal best of 5281 uh, for third place. When was the last time Shamir got a medal? T- 2015, right? 2015. Dang, that was when we first made our teams together. That's nuts. We oh back. My God. Yeah, she had the bow. That the give backs. Yeah, that's she had what the she had her bow. And now we've time. got grown and sexy Shamir out here on the track. She went from childish funny cuckoo crazy little shamir like that was our twitter freak like that was the queen of twitter and now she's grown and sexy shamir she's matured and, and now she's, she's got him metal again like <laughs> she'd still be funny <laughs> she's yeah. still funny shamir is still very funny <laughs> you know the hope uh, as always is to get someone like shamir on our show so we've put the we've put the ask out and now we'll wait and see we'll have Send caitlin pull the chicago card <laughs> yeah uh, Kudos to Anna Cockrell, f- fifth place finish in a personal best of 53-34. That's back-to-back personal best for her. You know, when we think about this event next year at the U.S. Olympic Trials, it's going to be an Hot. utter dogfight because think about, all right, we put two women in the top five this year. This doesn't include the possibility of Sydney McLaughlin Lavroni returning to the event, and then on top of that, a healthy Dalila Muhammad. I mean, chaos. Then in third, Russell Clayton, Rochelle. Rochelle Clayton, sorry. Uh, personal best mm-hmm. on the right side of history here because what happens in every 400 meter hurdles race is you get the front half crushes it and the back half <laughs> falls apart. Yeah. So uh, that's what you're here for. You're here for a medal, right? So it's like you go until you can anymore. Um, so kudos to her, another Jamaican medal. So th- now let's turn uh, to... Uh, some of the let's go in chronological order for the you know before we get to some of the semifinals so the evening session started off with the men's 5,000 meters and in the first one it was a tactical race Mo Katir you know a6 athlete <sighs> ends up winning 1335 did gets, you speak to him uh, I didn't ask a question but I was standing with the Spanish media um and because you know the guy asked better questions, and obviously a uh, little better at Spanish, and, and, <laughs> un pequeño better at Spanish. Un poquito, but no, I heard him talk. He's feeling confident. Obviously, he had like the extra day of rest because he didn't compete in the fifteen hundred final. Didn't get the vibe that he was really in the mood to talk about uh, Jakob Ingebrigtsen or you know that race last night. Um, but. Definitely someone that is worth watching, especially because, like, you know, Jakob was in this heat and he didn't look himself. Didn't look. I'm all starting that sharp. to buy in a little on the fact that he might actually have been a little sick. Yeah, y- Jakob stopped. Didn't stop, but spoke very quickly. Yeah. Why don't you share the story? What happened? Well, so he he he's speaking with Norwegian media gives them plenty of time, which is fair, you know. That, that he's a star in Norway. Caitlin wasn't even aware of the whole Ingebrigtsen television show. Dude, I'm excited to watch that. I yeah. will be tuning in. Did you I did not know not about know. it? No, wow. Jasmine was telling me, and then she just starts showing me, and I was like, bro, this is like keeping up with the Kardashians. Yeah, it's pretty it's good. Them, and I need to go watch. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you, the season finale ends, and the series finale ends in Tokyo. 
So, oh, spoiler! Oh, alert. so yeah, I know you what I'll be doing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it goes well. <laughs> yeah, it goes well. It goes really well. Um, that's just since McMahon drew it up. Um, <laughs> but uh, the team doctors did say that he was he came down with a fever before the race. But anyway, he spoke with Norwegian media, and then as he was walking away, one of a, a fellow media member screamed to him something like how do you feel about last night and Jakob like turned around and was like about about uh, you mean after <laughs> as in like we're done talking about last night how do I feel now and how am I bouncing back so a, focus a, on the future here but he did seem like he was in good spirits yeah, and that's a silver medalist mindset yeah it's also a, an Olympic gold medalist mindset mm -hmm. so uh now, the interesting aspects of this race, one was his Norwegian teammate, Narv Nordis. Why did he hit the brakes? He almost missed out. Yeah, we, you and I were both walking into the stadium um, as we were watching this race. And, uh, you know, we had our eyes definitely glued to Paul Chilimo, Abdi Hamid Nur, who, like, check, made it check. through. Check the box. They, they got through. But then we were watching Nordis, and, like, you know, we think that, he last night obviously came so close to beating uh Jakob as well but tonight he was just like hit the brakes and started going not not even backwards it was just like uh you're trying to hold the place but everyone else is still coming for you i'm looking at these results this is not the accumulated results but he doesn't have a big queue next to him he got through on a small queue yeah no no small queue no small queue oh so he's out no he's in he was eighth yeah, it's eight oh, night. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he holds on, to, but just barely by less than a tenth of a second. Uh, Mitch, there's some chaos, though. Yeah, there was. I mean, Stewie got caught up in it Australian wise. He gets Central through. Boy. Yeah, he's going through. Like, he'll be in the finals, but there's not much to defend. It looked like Parsons, like, he might have clipped some heels, or I'm not exactly sure what happened. And then once Sam went down, Stewie had, like, he was tucked on the rail, so he can't move anywhere. And he was face planted on the ground and. You know, he, he got back up and he finished it off. He got through pretty much immediately after whatever they call it now, the referral. But, um, you know, he's, he's a guy who can get into the final and can shake things up. Like, he's not afraid of getting to the front. He's not afraid of pushing the pace. And he's a tough competitor. I would have rather seen him not fall, obviously. Like, nobody ever wants to see an athlete fall. But, you know, sometimes in a race like that, it was a stacked heat. Like, that first heat was far superior than the second. Um, you know, he does get through finishes off that race there's no guarantee that he finishes inside that top eight so it's good that he's he's made his way through um but yeah he'll be uh he'll be out for some form of redemption stewie for sure two thoughts first off not saying stewie did this but if i'm like not feeling it i'm going down <laughs> you reckon you taking the dive <laughs> taking, someone down with <laughs> taking the dive i'm taking my american teammates with me yeah. we're going down and everyone's blaming falling. someone else yeah everyone's falling um Sam was a little rattled when he spoke to him. Sam right? was rattled. I look. Sam, Sam said it a little differently than you said it. No, well, what did he it, say? What no, did he, he say? He, yeah. Sam was just like, I don't know what happened. I got tripped up, and all of a sudden, I'm on the ground. Yeah, he, he wasn't. Like, but he won't get. He, he didn't, didn't get, say any names. I yeah, he didn't, he didn't get even through. Know if he was going to protest. I don't. He did not I, get through. I didn't get an update on that. Okay, but um, you know, obviously, we love Sam, so I hate to see him after like the battle that he had to even get here to mm. just not even get a fair shake of it. Sucks to see, but um. My second point, which I don't know if I'm, I'm like half joking on this one. Like, this is fun, but also I swear they must check your personal best when they decide whether or not you get through on a fall. Like, they're like, oh, how fast does Stewie run? Pull up his world athletics page. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this guy should be in the yeah. final. Like, <laughs> put him in, put him in yeah. the final. Yeah, maybe. Probably. I don't know, though, because <laughs> we had a 1500 guy go down in the heats, Matt Ramston, yeah. who's still fast, but he's a 334 guy. And he got put through from the like the heats to the semis when he fell. I think it's like maybe it comes back to what you're doing in the race. Because, I mean, Stewie was like – he was everywhere. There wasn't a part of that first or second lane that he did not touch. Like he was at the back, then he was at the front, then he somehow yeah. was on that rail. I think they just look at it and go like, all right, was this guy actually trying to make the final? Was he yeah. a sniff or was he like, he, was he getting his ass to the back of the pack? He was about to get dropped. Or, Let's or, not put him through. Or all the officials happen to be Australian. Yeah, or they love Stu. Yeah, or they love Stu. I mean, who doesn't love Stu? He's the, the king of Mare Island, Mare King Island in Australia. So he's... Uh, <laughs> He's a very loved guy. It's no, good to I, see him through. No one's going to argue the fact that Stu deserves to be in the final. So, look, it, we've seen 5K heats with, like, 30 guys line up before on indoor tracks. 
There's always room for one more. Second heat, uh, Luis Grijalva kind of takes this one wire to wire uh, in a way. Yeah. He pushed from the front, basically. He, t- he touched the front a lot in the yeah. beginning, and he's, he said he's comfortable up there, but also I talked to him, he's, and he can kick. And mm-hmm. he's, he's asking for a slow final. He said, hey, if, if it's going to be 12.50, I'll run 12.50. If it's going to be 13 flat, that's good. And if it's 13.10, even better. And this was a 13.30 something. And your boy out of Flagstaff has got wheels. The mustache today. Not good. Mm. <laughs> Didn't like it. That's a, uh, huh. yeah. yeah. I like, look at that look man. At that. <laughs> look at that man. It's on screen right now. That's just pure <laughs> jealousy from you. That is hot. No, I like it. Good. Also, the Guatemala singlet, that's my favorite out there. I love that Hoka design. Um, just for the record, David Melly supporting me on the anti- Mustache. Mustache. Really? You're shaving, it, you're oh. shaving it clean for the final, so. Confirmed? Must, look, I don't know. It's all about aerodynamics come the final. Every ounce counts. And then we've I don't know if that's an How heavy do you think that thing is? Even, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's it's not carrying a lot of weight on there. That looks like two weeks, right? Yeah, he said three. It doesn't seem three. like it took him long. Yeah. It's got no, the he goatee as well. Good. He always looks good. I was, <laughs> Josh. And then <laughs> Yomif Kajelcha, Mah- Mohamed, uh, Barihu Aragawi, Oscar Chalima, Mohamed Ismail. And then <laughs> there was a, they had to go to the milliseconds with uh, Jacob Krop and Ishmael Kipkarui, both Kenyans, uh, to try and get through. So that was... They both got know, through. They both got through, yeah, yeah. And so that was your top eight out of the second heat. Um so what kind of final are you expecting? I think it's going to be fast, to be honest. Like, I think there's a lot of world-class competitors in there. They're all like 1240, 1250 guys. Um, but I don't know. There's a lot of guys with a good kick. There's a lot of guys with a good potential to, if it does sit back and, and everybody wants to, because sometimes I feel like it's a, it's an ego thing for championship racing. It's like, all right, who's actually got the wheels? Who's got the, the bag to be able to roll with whatever it is I'm going with? I mean, I'm a big Louis fan. Like, I would love to see him get up and not just medal and win the thing. I think he's fit enough. I think he's had a good, you know, European season where he can do something like that. But I, I think it's going to be all out there only because I think Stewie's going to lead it. And I think he's, he's going to push the pace. Well, you also have three Ethiopians. Mm-hmm. Stewie in there is going to help, but with... Kajelka, Aragawi, and Gebrehiwat, you got three guys who have to run the legs out of Jakob. Mm. And after last year, that's what they should do. After the not doing after not doing that in the steeplechase, they need to employ some team tactics. Look, it's gonna be hot. You know who runs well in the heat? The Ethiopians do. Last time I checked, not that hot in Norway. Yeah. Like you gotta hold the map. <laughs> yeah. it's, I think Norway's up north. Yeah. The north way. Um and you gotta, you gotta make it hot. You gotta go fast. <laughs> well, there we go. And so, I think with the help of Stewie, that that could definitely happen. But also with guys like Jake, Crop, like there's enough people who have run so fast this season in the twelve low twelve forties. There's no reason to like mess around and make this a jog fest. Yeah, especially now that chapter guys not chapter in the guys out mm. like cuz chapter guy historically has been able to close he proved he can close in the 10k yeah. let's let's see something quick let's roll mm. uh, from that heat for our american audience uh Sean McGordy did not make it through unfortunately yeah he, he just he said ultimately he decided to do the double get that experience for next year and the 10 was still in his legs. He, he told me after, you know, I would love to do the 1500 and 5K. Everyone always wants to be a 1500 runner. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if next year he, and this is speculation, he didn't say this, but like I wouldn't be surprised if he really does go a little bit more all in on the five because he is a guy who has wheels and is still relatively young. Maybe in the 10, that medal seems a little further away, whereas on fresher legs, a fully healthy year, Sean does have that capability not only being the final, but be mixing it up. Uh, this is just a, an ignorant question here. What sort of experience do you think doubling in the 5K, 10K gets you when you're likely not going to perform that well in the second one? I'm not going to say that it was guaranteed that he wasn't going to perform that well, but the, the odds are against you. Yeah. So what sort of experience do you gain by putting yourself in a hole to start with in that second event? You know, I, I just don't think that that would be like... Oh, now I have this great experience of finishing 
12th in my heat and not advancing. But I, I think that the experience is, hey, next year, let's not try to do it. If the five is my better event, I can't get away with doing the 10 and then coming back on the five. Let's go all in specifically on the five. This is a guy who ran, what, 352, 353 in college in the mile and is now making 10K teams. And that's 352, 353 a mile before UW broke the mile. Um, <laughs> he did do it at UW, though. But I'm saying, like, <laughs> <laughs> before the UW guys this year changed our perception of what a fast mile is. At the time, it was excellent. And he has proven that he can close extremely hard, which is going to be necessary in a five, especially one that could potentially be one in the 1240s. I'm kind of with Mac though. Like, I think if you're a guy that I'm pot- also with, yeah. Mac, like, yeah. if your guy can potentially, <laughs> if you're going potentially medal and you've got that capability, then yeah, why not do both? Like, why not try and do something really special? But I, I kind of agree. Like, you're only the only experience you're going to get is getting smacked and then in the hole. So right. I can't imagine it's like a confidence builder or. You no, know, I just think like when you're in the the 10k and it's not going as well as you would like, you're thinking, oh, I've got the 5k. So then you're not running as hard in the 10k. And then when you're not running that well in the 5k, you're like, well, shit, I just ran the 10k and that didn't go that well. So yeah. I feel like putting all the eggs in the one basket, you yeah. you actually gain some experience for investing fully in that one event. I did ask if it had anything to do with Grant's health of whether or not he decided. I mean, this is college teammate and current training partner teammate who uh, had been dealing with a stress reaction. And I was like, was it just the fact that Grant wasn't healthy and ready to run? So you decided double. And he said, no, Jerry said, ignore Grant. Like, mm. <laughs> don't yeah. worry about that Dude, guy. <laughs> yeah. He's old news. Uh, yeah. We got you. No, but it, it, it was just like solely in a bubble. What do you want to do? You earned both and they decided double, but also just a quick grant update is that he is back healthy running again. So mm. nice. All right, let's move on over to the men's long jump. Jasmine, give us a report as to what happened there. That competition was very interesting because <laughs> it... <laughs> All right, next was, event. <laughs> <laughs> and we could cut it there. No, it was it was really exciting because these guys were really battling it out. At one point... Um, so uh, let me tell you guys the order of who won our medals. I guess that's kind of important before I get into why it was so fun to Do watch. Do you want me to say the first one, and then we can just give him a nickname? Yeah. Miltildius uh, Tentuglu from Greece. We could call, just call him, let's, let's call, call him the him Greece? Greece. He looked hella good. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to. Oh, that is Greece. nice. That is good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To our California and I like Australian that. listeners. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The and Greek. Then, <laughs> So I'm just calling the Greek so I don't mess up his name. And then the Greek followers come for me. So, um, and then we had Wayne Pinlock who came in second, 850. And then we had TJ Galley with a 825. Now, why this competition was so interesting is because the Greek and our Jamaican Pinlock, because we had three Jamaicans that were also jumping out the fucking ooh, freaking <laughs> roof. Um, I caught myself there. Nice. <laughs> it's all right. We're on City of Smack. Um, but so they both jumped 850. And our Greek decided that he wanted to win on his last jump. Like, it was absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, Wayne could not respond, and he ended up with a second place. But then you go down to second and, I mean, no, sorry, third and fourth place, and they also were sharing the same exact mark of Mm. 827. And what happens is they have to go down to the next best mark. They almost swept. Team Jamaica almost swept the long jump. Wow. That would have been crazy. Like, do you know how bonkers Jamaica would be going right now if they actually pulled that off? Yeah. I mean, I'd be terrified. Yes, yes Kyle. Kyle. I have a question. Yes. Um, when they say 850, do you feel like that's 100% of the time exactly down to the centimeter always accurate? Because sometimes... It feels like they're just eyeing it and just throwing something down. (laughs) They sweep it up before anyone could double check the math. You know, I is it laser? Here? It's laser. <laughs> what and a great conspiracy theory! Can we theory talk though? about this? Like, I, Wait till we get to my conspiracy theory. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh boy! I'm not a fan of the laser. Um, it's faster. It's a little bit more efficient for the rakers. It keeps the competition going quicker, but. Honestly, I would rather measure that, measure the shit out because <laughs> we want the exact number. I don't, I don't trust the laser. I also don't trust this whole 
freaking toll rolling rule. Like mm. it's got to go. This is one thing that we keep talking about. And it's just so minor. Um, for those of you that don't know about that rule, it's once you go to plant on the board, there used to be that plaster scene. When you look at the long jump, it's white. And then it's either black, red, or yellow at the very end of that board. You go to roll on it. And if your foot touches it and it puts a mark into that plaster scene, then it would be considered a foul. But for some reason, we decided that long jump and the horizontal jumps should be in line with the track and they decided that they were going to use a laser so if your foot just passes this little laser that they have even if it wouldn't have left a mark in the plasticine then it's a foul and there's a picture that's floating around on instagram really um yes on jumpers world i don't know if you can find it mac but um it's literally it, it's not a foul and when i tell you i'm staring at this picture and it just irks my soul because it's got that rule has to go it's unfortunate it's terrible like hey, oh, you just want all the board <laughs> carry yeah? on carry on no i yes, almost Chris? i almost uh, spilled the beans on some news but it won't come until tomorrow oh yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. good job good catch <laughs> um all right so this one was yeah i mean th- Thank goodness the Jamaicans didn't sweep or else we wouldn't be, we wouldn't hear the end of it. I kind of would have liked to see it. Really? I was really excited and really rooting for them. I mean, obviously I was cheering for our Americans, but you know, we were struggling a little bit out there. I don't know what's going on with Team USA and the jump. So my voice is going to be shaky, but (laughs) it's okay. I was really rooting for Team Jamaica during that competition. Mm -hmm. So the thing that I, (laughs) so we start my field event thoughts. So the thing about that, um, (laughs) It's always so anticlimactic when it's not the final jump that like wins it. Like Tentaglu wins it on the penultimate jump, goes crazy, and then kind of like shush the crowd a little. Like let's let's wait to see if he can get it back. And I kind of just wish like there was no final jump for like obviously he deserves <laughs> it. <but laughs> he doesn't just, get jump. Sorry, way, man, it's like, over. Like, yeah. That's, no, that's yeah. a terrible way. I like in theory. No. I, it's just so What do you mean? Again, so he doesn't no. get his six jump. Cameron, let's no. boo Kyle on three. Oh, that's, that's the Diamond that League process, shit. and it sucks. Awful idea. the lap count if you write that down. Kyle, Awful. you've had me Awful. all week with all of our I don't know. It just takes. felt anticlimactic. <laughs> we have Stand your ground. We locked in in all of our takes, but this one, terrible. All right, new take. Yeah, new take. I think then sportsmanship should go out the window because what happens is you want to be respectful and this is this happens in all field events. The next person go you overtook them. You don't go crazy because you want to wait to see how everyone else like make sure that you're safe. And then the next person goes, they don't jump as far, and then you're like, hey, good job. And I think we should just say it's okay to celebrate someone else sucking or not like not being as good. Sucking. No, obviously not sucking. He's yeah. Okay. Like, I, I mean, but I like, could agree with that. Like you should. St- celebrate like because I mean, there's shit, no I celebration after that's the thing for me because and he's just like hey great job that was so, awesome so do you hate like hail mary attempts because that's pretty much what this is like it is if dramatic you catch the hail mary yes it's dramatic <laughs> it's it's yeah, dramatic and tell it yeah yeah but I, that's that's what this is it's always more fun when the like it's the same thing in baseball like a team doing a walk-off is more exciting than the opposite Mm. Sure, but but on. so is striking someone out in the bottom of the ninth for, for a win. Yeah, but what if you don't celebrate and you just go up and shake their hand instead of like being like ah? It just depends on okay. who it Why is. Why can't you? So do you're, that? you're you're mad just at the ce- you're mad at the yeah. celebration, yeah, yeah. not I'm the process. The not the process of it. You want to see more of a celebration. Look, out the there. current process is certainly more fair. Maybe I just want to see people be meaner in, in their celebration. Celebration, you know, it would have been something crazy. It depends on the athlete. Yeah, I know that's but and also. You know what? Now I'm, you're celebrating someone's failure to be better than you <laughs> rather than your success being better than others. And that's like a different perspective that I just wish somehow got turned around a little. I mean, it could happen. I think it definitely depends on the athlete. They just don't want to be seen in such a wrong I'm light. definitely getting roasted in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working things. Look, I come here to work but things this out. This is my therapy. I got confused when you're out of the end there. Like, who are we celebrating, not celebrating? Men's triple <laughs> jump me, is a lot I'm of fun lost. because when you have the men's triple at the time where it was Christian Taylor, Will Clay, Omar Craddock, 
out there all competing, they were talking mess to each other. And yeah. that's what made it so exciting. I really miss that feel. Um, I hope that they can bring that back. I hope that somebody brings it back, which is why it was kind of fun with the whole like Q Tara situation that was going on. Cause you don't see that a lot, especially on the woman's side. Like, I'm all for that. Like, talk shit. Like, celebrate your wins. Yeah. Are you going to do better? Are you going to do better? Max, throw up on the screen on the bottom, should there be sportsmanship? <laughs> <laughs> Someone did say Kyle would not be a good golf fan. I am not oh, a golf fan. Oh, you would be yeah, a horrible golf, golf fan. Yeah. yeah. That's a shame. Yeah. All right. Um, moving on. <laughs> I do professional wrestling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 All right, women's 200 meter semifinals. Um, I mean, no major shockers, right? I'm uh, like scrolling no. through these. Sharika, that's the only person we got to talk about because, baby, mm. girl, like, excuse me, the girl just. 22 dissed. flat. <laughs> 22 flat jogging in. Jogging. Well, the girl shut it down. She looked. That was wild. Look, yeah. and this is, this is a good example of. Maybe it really benefits Shakari to not have the semis and the finals on the same day. Just like the emotion of winning the 100 and everything, being able to separate the two. I think if there was a final today, Sharika looked unreal. I'm sure she wishes there was a final today. So, uh, but it's a whole new ball game when we come back on a different day. Yeah. Gabby looked good Gabby from lane eight. Great. Apparently, great. lane eight again in the final. This is our oh, third. She perfect. just keeps getting it on the outside. I think it's working well for her because then she doesn't have to really focus. You run scared in lane eight. Mm. You just run mm. scared. You, you don't know what's happening behind you. You can't see like who's out in front. You you just got to get out and go for it. Balls to the wall. Do you think given Gabby's strengths versus Sharika's strengths, running scared helps or hurts? I think for Gabby, it'll help. I think it'll be okay. Um, Why? Is it like... Just to just launch she, her out of the turn? Or yeah, what? just launch her out on the turn. Lane eight is still a pretty... It's better than being on the inside lane. Um, you don't want to be on that those insides. So the turn's a little bit wider. I think she'll be great coming off that curb. She's got a great start. She's a great 200 runner. So she really doesn't have to worry about any of the other competitors. The only fear that I would have for her is that Sharika does get to see how fast she's going out and so hopefully it does just scare her enough to be like shit i gotta give it my all don't give her a chance is there anyone that you think podiums besides gabby, gabby? and shakiri yeah is there like talu right but mm -hmm. after today do you think talu like we saw julian something? Alfred. so we're just gonna forget julian like little juju been holding on strong all season i, I wouldn't count her out i would not count out juju oh We've got uh, David. David over there. Dina, Dina Asher Smith. A little Dina head over there. <laughs> He's like, Dina, Dina, <laughs> Dina. <laughs> she ran an incredible she first did. curve she and then did. shut it down. I love that she repeated exactly. What <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they can't hear it. <laughs> David has an earpiece in to, to curve. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Direct feed. David, who did you think was looking really attractive tonight? <laughs> there we go. So <laughs> this, yeah, I mean, this one, like, uh, similar to the 100 final, all all the heavy hitters go through. Yeah. Nothing. So. I just did an exciting final that we get to see and witness, and I'm excited to watch these girls go. I think that Shrika is the one to keep your eyes on just based off how she looked today. She's someone that can carry that momentum over I don't ever really have fear when it comes to Sharika having days rest. I think it works well for her. Honestly, she's just kind of like a robot, and she can just keep going. Um, let's move over real quick to the men's. Can we talk about two hundred meter? But first, immediately, like, it's uh, we had some some news before the races even started. Can I tell you guys before I even tell them the news? Like, I went to the restroom and came back. And I'm like, oh, the 200s are about to start because, you know, I'm sitting there like, let me pay attention to this long jump and I got to watch the 200s. Let me go in between the girls and the boys. I came back and all of a sudden I'm like, he too, did I, I took that long in the restroom? What's going on here? And then I learned the news. <laughs> yeah. So at about 8 o'clock p.m. tonight outside of the <laughs> Budapest National Stadium, some of the men's 200 meter semifinalists, including 100 meter world champion Noah Lyles. You can see the video on the screen if you're watching this. 
were involved oh. in a buggy collision on their way to the to the stadium. Can I see the kid falling. Whoever that so is. So that is. Oh, someone's one out. Car going going up against the other. T bone. Damn. Mac, I would uh, stop showing this footage before. Can they not? <laughs> <laughs> can those carts not stop? Like, do they not no, see, yeah. they they not see each other? Yeah. So then they have. How could they so not they see have, each other? Uh, they have drivers in them, and <laughs> what <laughs> the reason that we uh, were put on high alert is like it is, this wasn't just any two carts. They were carrying athletes and. Noah Lyles, thanks to the cameras and the microphones that are, have been installed into these carts, Noah says he thinks he got glass in his eye. He was hot mic in there. So he was referring to Jamaica's Andrew Hudson. And Andrew Hudson is, like, holding his eye. And these guys are about to head to the, to the track. And instead what happens is now there's, like, confusion when they're announcing the races and, like, even Caitlin, who was down in the mix zone, Texas, is like, what happened to Heat 1? I didn't watch. And it's like, Heat 1 didn't happen. They decided to reshuffle the order. So Heat 2 was the first one. Heat 3 was the second one. And then Heat 1 was the third one because they gave Andrew Hudson an option. Uh, he had three minutes to think about it. It's like, do you want to run or not? And he was holding his eye. Vision. What was the not? If you just run, you you're don't make it. it. That's no, it. You're Done. Out. Wow. Jesus. So then Steve. he ran the race. You got to run. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No His shot. vision was blurry, and he finished fifth in 20.3A, the fastest anyone has run with glass in their eye. Um, <laughs> Noah Lyles, the easiest 1976 up in the front of the race. But, you know, in the media area, Noah Lyles comes through, just kind of. Actually, he did. He stopped for NBC, and they made him reenact. Uh, this is the, weird. <laughs> this is so weird. What? what, the crash? They made him reenact the crash with two, um, like, glasses uh, cases, like, you know, the... Oh, oh my God. What? So they're like, hey, uh, here, take these two and, and <laughs> tell us what happened. And he, like, walks him through, and he says there was just miscommunication as to, like, which one of the two cars was going to break. And then, um, you know, he was... They were like, so where were you sitting? And he was like, uh, up towards the front <laughs> to the right. Did he show on the glasses case? Yeah, he was like, <laughs> uh, up here. And so... Um, and then they ended, I believe, ended up using the real footage, so they didn't really need the glasses case thing. But anyway, Netflix, um, is Netflix gonna is going to build eat this up. They're going to build this up to so be big. <laughs> I Andrew love that. Hudson comes through, and the biggest swarm of me 